My name is Kevin Teasley, and welcome to this episode of our Need 8424 tutorial series. Um, we're here at uh, United Recording Studios on the Sunset and Gower lot in Hollywood, California, in my personal production room, Studio K. And in today's episode, we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to talk about the Neve 8816 used in conjunction with the Neve 8424. As you know, I have the Neve 8424 behind me, and I have a Neve 8816 in my side rack. And I used the Neve 8816 with the 8424 on this summer's 2021 uh, TLC concert tour. Um, it was kind of an anniversary of their Crazy Sexy Cool album. I ran BGVs through it, live drum kit. Um, by using the Neve 8816 in conjunction with the 8424, I essentially uh, expand my track count uh, or channel count to another 16 channels. And it has a beautiful summing mixer with the transformers on it. So we're gonna talk about how I use that in conjunction with the Neve 8424. Uh, click the links below for some TLC footage and let's get into how I use it for the tour. Thank you for staying tuned to this episode in our Neve 8424 tutorial series. And we really do hope that you were able to check out some of the links on some of the uh, concert footage and some of these uh, iconic records. Um, a little bit more about the gig. Um, I've worked with uh, TLC um, as a Pro Tools programmer, as an MD, and now doing mixes and pre-mixes for their live shows. I was uh, called by a really good friend of mine, an extremely talented music director and live music producer, Javad Day, to work on this. This was their uh, crazy, sexy, cool anniversary tour, um, the summer of 2021. And as we spoke about in some of our past videos, um, the uh, original record assets and live music production that has been done before in the past spans many, many years. So you're getting assets from a lot of different places, a lot of different production styles. Some of it sounds really, really good. Some of it sounds um, not as good because, you know, it's just been 10, 15 years since, you know, technology has changed. So you're trying to get everything to sit in one place to be a, a for lack of a better word, a consistent movie for this tour and a sound experience for the audience. So I want to walk you through, um, as always in my past episodes, how I set the, the, the Pro Tools session up, how I set up the console, and kind of walk you all through that. Um, so let's start. Um, I've used the Neve Recall app to recall the session um, for that project. And um, it was pretty, uh, I don't want to use the word involved, but I had to really think about how I wanted to route everything to give myself the most flexibility um, and give myself the highest track count. Um, like most of the sessions that we talk about, um, the live shows are an hour and a half, two hours long, up-tempo, ballads, medium-tempo, uh, video packages, voiceover, dialogue, sound effects, um, dance breaks, DJ breaks. So you really want to kind of have everything sit in a good place. Um, I didn't have to carve everything out um, per se because I would call what I was doing is pre-mixing because I'm passing it off to the Pro Tools person, uh, playback person for the tour that's going to be going out of their outputs to the monitors in front of house. So you want to give them something that's pretty uncolored. I don't want to use the word uncolored, but you're just not carving it out so they can do their thing at each position. Um, so I want to go through that session for that and how I have things routed. So after recalling the app, I've already done all of my input gains into the console where I want them and set, set the direct outs. And for this one, I'm doing direct outs post fader, but I also did another pass of my, my direct outs being pre fader for my records in, in archives later, if I ever needed to recall it and bring it back to the console. But on channel one, um, T. Boz's record vocals were that was just for the rehearsals and the, the, the video content and the screen departments to be able to program what they needed to program um, because they all sing live. And then Chili was on channel two. Left Eye was on channel three, but she stayed in the box, so to speak, because unfortunately she's no longer with us. So whenever her raps would come up, they would either bring up video footage of the videos or, you know, uh, do a nice dance break to her raps. Um, channel four was for guest rap or any guest that might be on the record. Um, that's not one of the three ladies. Uh, five and six were 
ad libs, vocal effects, vocal chops, things of that nature. Um, seven and eight were BGVs from the record. Nine and ten were sound effects. Eleven and twelve were guitars. Thirteen and fourteen. So thirteen was electric bass, and fourteen was bass synth. Fifteen and sixteen. Those were my Pro Tools drums, percussion loops, things of that nature. And if I didn't mention, early, didn't mention earlier, because of the concert, was everything was in the box, basically band in the box. They traveled with the DJ. For some shows later, they brought in a band. But for the most part, the tour was band in the box. So I wanted to give the front of house and monitor engineers the most flexibility, of course, if, if nothing else, uh, the drums. Um, so I have the live drum kit that was recorded. Kick on channel 17, snare on 18, 19 was hi-hats, 20 was Tom high, 21 was Tom mid, 22 was Tom low, floor Tom, 23 and 24 were uh, the overhead and cymbal mics. Then what I did down here, I routed all of the keyboards and synths to my Neve 8816 uh, summing mixer. I usually have it on 23 and 24, but for this one, I brought it in on channel, uh, what would that be? The last channels on this one. Uh, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, and 40. Channel 39 and 40 for the keyboards. Um, and the way I split that up on the summing mixer is one through four was the original record stems keyboard parts. Uh, five through eight were the original record synth parts. And then 9 through 12 were additional production keyboards. And, and then 13 through 16 uh, was additional um, production uh, strings and synths and things like that. That all got summed over there and came back into the console. Another reason why I did that is because on the Neve 8816, there's an insert and an insert mix. So on the uh, 8816, I inserted a hardware EQ and I inserted a hardware compressor that then hit the console. And we'll talk about that's why you see um, these buttons down here lit red. So as you can see on uh, every channel, <clears throat> excuse me, I had inserts. Um, I'll, I'll undo the inserts for now for demonstration purposes. Every channel or every pair had hardware EQ and compression on it. Again, not a lot, just tone shaping, correcting it, anything. Uh, and the way I have that routed is the t boz record vocal was sent to group one and then the chili record vocal was sent to group two both mono um i don't have an engage here because i'm using the microphone now but i had them both going through the neve 1073 built-in amp i'm mean, a preamp and then going to the neve 1070 uh the 2264 alb compressor limiter just for their record vocals to kind of rein everything in because, you know, even though I'm doing a little bit of leveling and balancing, you know, I want to give that dynamic range. Um, when we talk about how we print it, you'll see why they went to group one and two. And then I sent what I had up here, the keyboards that was on my input C, the, 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 the Q mix turned into 48 channel mix mode to input C. I'm sending them, as we talked about in the previous video, if I press and hold the pan button, hit either group three or four, the button, the light turns red. And then if I hit those, now I'm sending that to group three and four. And from that, because I have inserts on channels 15 and 16, I didn't want to send them up there. I wanted to have something on 15 and 16. So I'm sending these from uh, input C in the 48 channel mix mode over to group three and four. And from there, they're having some EQ put on them from the console. Uh, the pan for, for stereo feel that's getting sent to the mix out. And I have some inserts on those, some EQ and compression on those as well, just to stage it. All of this is getting sent to the mix out, which has EQ on it. And then I have an insert on that as well to some compression, just to kind of mix bus compression. The vocals, some keyboard parts, some BGVs are getting sent to reverbs that are being sent to the appropriate group or the mix out. And that way I'm able on the mix out to print two track mixes for all, for the, for Javad as, as the music director for T-Boz and Chili as the artist 
for management, for production management, just for everyone to listen to, choreo, to be able to work to, <coughs> excuse me. So that's how we talked about in the earlier videos, how I'm able to do two track mixes. Um, I think I've covered everything there. Uh, all the keyboard parts are going to the Neve 8816. They're being brought back into the console, sent to groups three and four, EQ, inserts on those. The two reference um, vocals, Shelly and T-Biles are going to group one and two. They have EQ on them. They have the Neve 1073 to the 2264As um, to, to the mix outs. But they're also, when we talk about printing stems, when we go to the Pro Tools session, I'm able to print direct out back into Pro Tools post fader, as well as through the hardware outputs, print back in the reference vocal for both Chili and t boss as well as print back in my keyboard stems. So again, I'm able to print everything in, one through 24, group one in as a mono stem, uh, which is t boss vocal, group two is a mono stem, Chili record vocal, and then group three and four, which is the, the, the keyboard music parts printed back in. But let's just take a quick look at the Pro Tools session. I have up here first um, what I have on every channel. Um, in Pro Tools, I usually start with heat on every channel in Pro Tools, and then console one. And then this one, I have um, the Neve console one emulation up where I'm using the, uh, the, the dynamic shaping, the gating uh, from the Neve console the EQ from the Neve console and the compressor from the Neve console. And you're seeing it on the kick, for example. Another great thing that I love about using the console one, the soft tube uh, products, is that you can see on this uh, drums comp, um, like a loops uh, channel, I'm using um, the dynamic shaper of the Neve, but I'm using a UAD pull tech as the EQ and the UAD Fairchild as a compressor. Again, I like putting them all in the console if I'm not using the full channel strip because for one, it keeps my sessions nice and tidy and everything's in, in, in one package, so to speak. So when I'm mixing through things quickly, I kind of feel like I'm pseudo working on a console instead of opening up plugins. So it's a good thing about opening plugins because you can graphically and visually see what you're doing. But when you're familiar with the, the either the hardware or the software emulations, um, that you can just move, for me, quicker this way. So when we look in this session, you can see how everything is there. You know, like we talked about in uh, previous episodes, all the songs, all the stems, and all the groups and everything, everything's color-coded like I normally have it. Um, and if you look at the mix screen, it's normally how I have it. This time it's a little bit different that I'm not going into my auxiliaries, my two mix buses down to the console. Because again, for this one, I wanna make sure that I'm giving the front of house and the monitor engineer stuff that's not too compressed, not too you know, processed for them to do live because you do wanna have that dynamics of a band playing live. So you see how everything's being routed. And as always, I have tons of notes uh, on each track um, of what the hardware I put on there and, and what, you know, routing it went to, um, which for me really helps me out for recalls and just to know even when I'm working in the session what I have. Um, sometimes I'll put the, the, the print, the stem uh, mix prints um, on the left. Just depends on the session. I'm pretty good about keeping my ergonomics of my session the same but sometimes I do like to move it around depending on what the project is. But as always, um, I have TC Electronics Clarity on every ch uh, channel. I always like to be able to check phase and um, look at the real-time analyzer and things like that, look at the LUFs. But as you can see, heat on every channel, then console one, and then mainly on the, the lead vocals and then the drums, the live drums, I have the UAD uh, 1073 uh, EQ and pre preceding the console, which as we talked about, um, then goes into a Neve emulation uh, of the, the dynamic shaping EQ and compression. And then that hits down here. Then once it hits the console, 
I had inserts on every channel with my notes of EQs and compression. And then I would print back in. And this is, uh, as you can see, here's everything being printed back in. And you can see how everything would be printed back in. And this is where they would be printed. To. So, for me, it's very important to keep this workflow the same and keep the console kind of set up in a, in, a, in a pretty similar workflow because when I'm working from show to show, project to project, I want to make sure that I, I, can, I myself can wrap my head around uh, what I'm doing. Um, if I were uh, tracking this, um, as you would see, and as I stated, I'm printing these back in uh, post fade so that when they get my stems, they're getting it indicative again to the mixes that were approved and that everyone's been listening to. Um, again, as I've said in past episodes, I will then go back and also print them pre-faded. So that way, if I ever needed to recall it again, I can recall it and send it back to the console, recall the session, and then when it hits the console and then where I have the faders, um, it'll be relatively indicative to um, the mix everyone has been uh, listening to and the stems that we need. Um, I think that pretty much covers it. It was a really fun gig. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. But you'll continue to see how powerful the console is. And most of the examples we've been given in the tutorials are in a live context or for TV. But even if you're making a record, it's great to be able to print your two-track mixes, you know, your full mix, your instrumental, your acapella, your TV mix, uh, in a few passes. And at the same time, you're printing your stems back in because as a artist or a performer or a producer, songwriter, you're gonna always need your stems um, to be able to work with later, to be able to perform live with later, and to just archive your sessions. You can always have a full session, but then have a stem mix session that you can work from as well. Um, I hope that sheds some more light on the console and another way to work with it. And please stay tuned to the next episode.